Hello there everybody, uh, Data Pioneer here again with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and today I thought I'd come to you uh, and show you a little bit about um, Bookstack. It's an application that I've installed uh, in Portainer in Open Media Vault on my system. I have a, a Linux system here on my desktop um, and so we'll take a look at Bookstack here in just a moment. Okay, I'm back out on the desktop, but let's go out to Bookstack, and here's the website where you can find information about Bookstack. It's at bookstackapp.com, and I'm going to go ahead and put a link to this down in the video below. Um, it's a simple free wiki software. It allows you to create uh, your own self-hosted platform for developing your own books. Uh, it's free and open source software, simple interface, it's searchable connected, it's configurable, has lots of you know simple requirements, but very powerful features. It is multilingual, has about 30 different languages that you can set up in there. Uh, so it's a great little application, and so you can probably download it uh, from their website. I'm not really sure, but one way for certain that I know you can get it uh, is to do what I'm about to show you, and that is to develop a uh, a Bookstack container based on a an image that you get from Docker Hub or Linux Server.io, um, which you then deploy as a stack into a container, and then you have the application as a web-based application that you can access via the web. So let's get right to it here. Uh, I'm going to go actually. First thing I want to do is open up um, Open Media Vault, which you will need that open. So let me go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll go ahead and log in. And so let me select Open Media Vault, log into it. Okay, here we are with Open Media Vault. Now, Open Media Vault, I've done a video on this. Uh, this particular application is one that you use for setting up a network attached storage network at your home, a NAS uh, network, if you will, for storing uh, files and pictures, folders, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, videos. Uh, I've got two one terabyte uh, spinning hard drives that are connected in a, an enclosure, USB connected 3.0, and it's set up in Open Media Vault, and I'll show you that here in a moment. Um, and they run 24/7 uh, with Open Media Vault, so I have access to those, and I can load uh, information into those um, drives, and it can be accessible by any device on the network, uh, iPad, uh, iPhone laptop, desktop, whatever. Okay, So let's go op open up the second application here and the second application I want to open is one called Portainer and Portainer is going to allow us to build the stack image of Bookstack. So here is my uh, login for Portainer. Let me go ahead and log into Portainer. So I'm logged in here. Okay, And so let's go down to stacks. Let me click on that and I've got five stacks already installed. I've got DuckDNS, I've got Fresh RSS, Heimdall, Qubit Torrent, and Wireshark are all applications running right now um, in Portainer uh, out on the web so I can touch them on the web on my LAN. Uh, I'm using a Raspberry Pi Model 4, uh, a 4 gig device uh, for this particular purpose. It's uh, running a Raspbian Lite uh, operating system, which is a derivation of Debian 9 Linux uh, minus the GUI desktop because I don't need the GUI desktop to uh, to run this. I've installed Open Media Vault on it and set that up and uh, it is necessary uh, to do what I'm about to show you here with Portainer. Um, and so let's get into that. Uh, but I need to tell you that that is a prerequisite that you need to have set up. So go check out my Open Media Vault video if you want to look and see how that is set up on a Raspberry Pi. All right, so let me go out again on the web here, and let me go one more time to another website called Linux Server uh, Images. It's LinuxServer.io. Okay, 
And this website has all of the images that I need to uh, access uh, to build uh, containers, uh, Docker containers, in Portainer uh, to be reachable by the uh, web browser. And uh, so if I go up to Images, and I go in here to the search uh, window, and I type in uh, Bookstack, it brings up Bookstack, Linux Server Bookstack. If I click on that, it takes me out to the fleet page and the Linux Server Bookstack page. And here at Docker Hub, I can go over and click the Linux Server Bookstack link. And that brings up this web page, which is a Linux Server.io Bookstack uh, Docker Hub page. And if I scroll down, uh, the first thing that you see here is information about Bookstack tells a little bit a little bit about it um, and we saw that on the home page of Bookstack so we really didn't need to repeat that it tells you what the supported architectures are for the image that I grabbed and you can see that it is for the x86-64 uh, the ARM-64 and the ARMHF okay so the Raspberry Pi uses the ARM-64 so that's great that means I'll be able to take advantage of this First image that you see here, the Docker image, is this one. This particular Docker image is one that you would use in Linux in the terminal to build Bookstack from the terminal. I don't want to do that. I want to use Portainer and uh, Open Media Vault and set it up that way. So I'm going to go down to the Docker Compose image, which is what this is. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this whole thing here. And so let me do a right click and copy that. And let's go back to Portainer and come in here and I want to add a stack in Portainer. This is Portainer.io and let me add a stack here. Let me give this a name so I'm going to call it Bookstack. Okay, and I'm going to come down and click on here and right click and paste all of that information that I just grabbed from LinuxServer.io. Okay, once I got that um, then I can concentrate here on Portainer and build this stack and deploy it and then build the container that will eventually uh, be the Bookstack application that I can touch on the web. So typically the first seven uh, lines of the code here in the Docker Compose images you don't really need to concern yourself with. So on line seven that ends with the beginning of the environment section. So I, I really don't need to uh, concern myself with anything up here. I need to start with line eight and uh, there are two bits of information the PUID and the PGID and that is different for every particular user it's not the same for every user that that sets up the docker compose image uh, I say it's different and here's how it's different I'm gonna need to uh, be able to go out to my Raspberry Pi and uh, inquire into the Raspberry Pi through a command in the terminal uh, what these values should be they're not 1000 1000 now, one of the things I need to tell you is if you look up here on the right hand side, uh, I'm logged in as Portainer, in Portainer as admin, so I need to get the ID for admin because that's the user for this particular Portainer application uh, in order to get the values for PG, PUID and PGID. Now, how do I do that? Well, how I do that is this. Let me, uh, let me go out into the terminal here in Linux and not the terminal. Let me get out of this. I'm sorry. I'm going to use another application. I want to go and use the uh, PuTTY application instead of the terminal. So let me go to PuTTY and the PuTTY SSH client. I could have used SSH but I'll just use this. The IP address of my Raspberry Pi is 192.168.1.125 and it is listening on port 22. And so if I click open here it's going to bring up a terminal session window here it's looking at my Raspberry Pi. Now unfortunately I cannot increase the size of this so hopefully you can see what is happening on the screen. So I'm going to log in as root here on the Pi. Put in root's password. Alright so I'm logged in. I'm SSH'd into the Pi and now what I want to do is run a command called ID and then the user ID that I'm running and Portainer which is admin. Okay, that's very important. If you're running it as a data pioneer, if you're running it as anything else, root, whatever, uh, you'll need to put that in here instead of admin. So it's a ID admin for me. Hit enter. And it tells me that the UID associated with that user is 998, and the GID associated with that user is 100. I don't, really don't need to concern myself here with the group. These are the two values that I need to be concerned about here. All right. 
So what I'm going to do, go ahead and close this terminal and go back out. And let's go back to Portainer. And what I need now to do is go under the PUID section, remove the 1000 and put in 998, and then bring this down to a value of 100. So it's 998 and 100. All right, so for the desktop host, or d database host rather, bookstack underscore db is fine. The db user is bookstack, the db password. To make this a simple example, I'm just going to use the word password here. Don't do that on yours. Uh, db database is bookstack app. That's fine. Now we come down to the volume section, and I'll I need to show you how we uh, modify this particular portion of the Docker Compose image. I'm going to highlight uh, outside of this uh, dash here all this information of path to data exclusive of the colon. I'm not going to include the colon here and replace it with the information that's pertinent to my uh, OMV or Open Media Vault setup. Okay, uh, I have a folder out in Open Media Vault called config and let me go back to Open Media Vault here and show you that in Open Media Vault, I have set up two shares, three shares actually, under this SMB CIFS. Uh, I have three shares set up, one called File Store Vault 1, File Store Vault 2, and Config. Now, Config is where I ins install, it's the directory that I install all my uh, Docker Hub containers into, or stacks into, when, before they're deployed. So that's where they all reside, okay? So it, you have to go into Open Media Vault, and I have a video, as I said, uh, I'll put a link to that down below as well, um, that you have to go in here and use SMBC IFS and set up the config folder uh, to be reachable on your network. And then under the shared folders, I have three shares, the file store vol 1 and 2, which are one terabyte hard drive, spending drives. This one, I believe, is the Western Digital Drive. This one's the Bar Barracuda Drive. And then I have the config folder, which I have installed on the store vol 2 drive as well. And then we have the absolute path to the, all three of those shares or shared folders out on the network. Okay, This is what we need to concern ourselves with. But the first thing I want to do is show you that if I go back out to my network and if I go to um, let me open this up again and uh, let me go back out to um, file store vault 2 there is all the folders that are in file store vault 2 and if I go up to network and double click on the raspberry SMS SMB CIFS you can see that I have those three directories or folders that I talked about we have the file store vault 1 File Store Vault 2, and then the config. This is where all of my Portainer uh, Docker images go. Okay, so we have looked at that. Let's go back to um, the web here and go back to uh, Open Media Vault. Now, in order to fill in the information that I need for the Portainer uh, information here for path to data, what I need to do is go back to uh, let's go back to Open Media Vault here. Go back here, open Media Vault, and here is the absolute path for config. And so, what I want to do here is I want to right click and inspect that particular path and come back over here. This is the directory location to it here. And um, I want to right click and edit the text, right click and um, copy that information. And I can go ahead and close this. Okay. And then come back to Portainer, and then I want to right-click and paste that path in there. And here it is. It's SRV slash dev dash disk dash buy dash label dash store vault 2 forward slash config. That's pointing to that folder that I showed you in uh, uh, PCMANFM. Okay, so now I am going to put a forward slanting line to create a subdirectory which will be created on the fly by Portainer when it uh, de deploys the stack. I'm going to call it Bookstack. Okay, so it's going to be installed underneath the config folder out on the network. All right, come down and you'll notice the port here is port 6875 and port 80. This is the internal or the external port, this is the internal port. So port the uh, Bookstack will be listening on port 80. 
internally, but we'll be, li be uh, grabbing information, listening externally on port 6875. All right, we can run down. We don't need to worry about any of the rest of this. And now we get into the database portion because there is a MariaDB database associated with Bookstack. And so we can come on down. We can replace the PUID information with the same information we replaced above. If I can type it. Okay, and we need to replace that with a 100. So it's 998 and 100. The MySQL root password, it's called it MySQL, but it's actually MariaDB. Uh, I'm going to give it the same one, password, make it simple. Um, the time zone is uh, important here because this is a server and so the server needs to have the correct time zone because if the time is off the servers have a tendency not to work properly so if you don't know what your time zone is there's a way of finding it but I happen to know what mine is it is America slash New York I'm in the eastern time zone so it's America slash new underscore York uh, Bookstack app is the uh, MySQL database. Uh, Bookstack is the MySQL database user. And the password here is password again. I'm just going to give it all the same password. Make it, make it easy. Don't do that, please. Um, and then for the path to data here, uh, go up and copy this information so we don't have to go back out again. Uh, all the way up to this point to config, well, actually the whole thing up to there, up to the colon. Let's right click and let's copy that. Now let's come back down and here let's put in the path to data. Don't select the colon please. Right click and paste that information in. So we have this information here all the way up through store vault 2 config bookstack and then since this is the database for bookstack I'm going to do another forward landing line and put DB. I want everything to be in the same directory folder under config. So the database is going to be under bookstack and bookstack is going to be under config. So I'm done. I'm ready to start launching this thing. So I'm going to come down. I've given it a name. All right, and so it should be highlighted. Deploy the stack. I'm going to go ahead and deploy the stack. All right. This does take some time. It takes a few minutes to deploy. And when it reports up here in the right-hand corner in Portainer that it has uh, completed the stack successfully, deploying it successfully, that doesn't necessarily mean it's ready to use. And I'll show you why in a moment. Uh, because it, it does wrap up some things after it reports it. So it says stack successfully deployed. It is appearing here now in the list. okay? Uh, but it's not ready to use right now. I can um, guarantee you that. If I click on it, and then come down here to Bookstack. It does say it's running. It does say the database is running. But if I come over here under the quick action and I click the logs, you'll come down. You'll see it's not finished yet. What I'm looking for, see, it's, it's actually doing some stuff while I'm talking to you. Um, I'm looking for something called done or listening on port empty squat. Um, but it's going to say done when it's finished. And when it says done, then I'll be able to launch this thing and show you Bookstack, uh, show you how we get into it. Now, uh, by default, the username for Bookstack is going to be uh, an email address called admin at admin.com, and the password is going to be the word password. Uh, you'll want to change that on yours. You'll want to change the, not only the uh, password, but you'll also want to change the uh, email address so that you don't have admin at admin.com. I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to show you a book stack and then I'm going to close the video up. But um, hopefully here uh, we'll be finished with uh, deploying the stack on book stack, getting the container created uh, in Portainer, and then we'll be able to uh, launch this and let you see what it looks like. I'll probably go ahead and pause the video here and uh, come back so that you don't have to sit through the uh, time frame. It takes about Bookstack about five minutes to completely uh, complete its process. So I'll uh, I'll pause this video and come back when it's done. Okay, I'm back, and uh, as you can see from the logs here, it says now it is done, and so that means I should be able to go out and touch Bookstack now on the web. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and launch the web browser to another tab. And the remember the IP address I told you for the Raspberry Pi was 
1.168.1.125. And if you recall from the book stack, uh, the container in Portainer, the uh, port number for book stack was 6875. All right, Oops, 75. And so if we click on that, here we are with the login screen. So we're looking at book stack here. Uh, accessing this via uh, the web and I can do this I'm on the desktop but I can do this uh, from my laptop I can do it from my iPad or iPhone uh, as long as I have a web browser that can get on my network I can go to that IP address which is the IP address of my Pi port 6875 and I'll reach this login screen alright and so to log in here I'm gonna go ahead and log in with RoboForm because I already have it set up and for Bookstack and uh, log in um, Oh, this is a new installation. Sorry. Um, remember, I told you it would be admin at admin.com, and the password would be password. Sorry about that. I've already reset that, and I'll have to go set that back again. Login, and there we are. And so we are now logged into Bookstack. You'll, ne you'll need to go in here, and you'll need to go into the settings or under admin, uh, edit profile, and you'll need to change the password change the email address, change the password, uh, and everything else associated with that here as well. But if you look here under books, you have the ability to set up books, uh, create a new book, uh, change the grid view. You have, uh, once you get books set up, you can actually create your own book um, with chapters. Um, so if you click on the books themselves, uh, so let's say create a new book, and give the book a name. Let me just do sample and you can put a description in here. I'll just type in something. You can do a cover image. You can do book tags. You can actually assign tags to the book. So tag one and then tag two. I'm just going to do this quickly. Uh, this is not about setting up this thing totally. It's just about getting it installed this video. And so I do a save the book here um, I can actually come in here and it says it was successfully set up. I can create a new chapter. I can give the chapter a sample chapter name and a description if I want to. I can do chapter tags if I like, save the chapter. And so now I have a book with a chapter here. So we've got chapter name, got chapter one. If I do um, a new page, then it comes to a, uh, an actual here. I can do in a new page sample. Okay, and then come down and start typing. Okay, uh, I can, this, this editor here is this editor that you see in typical text editors, and so, you know, you can insert images and, and insert uh, links and everything you can do in any other editor. Create your pages here in your book, uh, Per chapter and you've got your book set up and then when you have multiple books set up and you start getting into different categories of books you can actually go out on the well, let me do a cancel here let me just save this information uh, first of all and um, and so I can do a save page and then I'll come back out here to and it says page successfully created I can click shelves and I can create a shelf create uh, one now and I can create a shelf, call it a new shelf, give it a description, uh, then I can start dragging books. I can drag that sample book into the shelf and uh, depending on the shelf's name and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So Bookstack is a very nice uh, application for setting up your own uh, library, if you will, of your own books. Uh, you can bring in books that you have that you can uh, import into Bookstack as well. Uh, put them on the bookshelf and then you have uh, the ability to touch these books anywhere on your network where uh, you can reach this IP address um, at that port 6875. So this has been a video on Bookstack and um, check it out guys it's a wiki software uh, very nice software I've started using it started playing with it and I think you'll like it um, and I wanted to bring it to you today, a video that shows you how to go ahead and set that up with Open Media Vault and Portainer so you can grab the Docker image from uh, Docker Hub, which is up on uh, linuxserver.io. And I'll put the links for all those down below the video. 
Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, uh, please leave comments down below the video as well. If you haven't subscribed to my uh, uh, channel, please do so and hit the bell so that you'll get notified every time I upload a video. Uh, do hit that up thumb up, please, to uh, like my video if you like the content and what I did today. And uh, that way it will help support my channel. And so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a good afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye.